This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get four additional pros and cons in the Nebula Plus version of this video when you sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula using the link in the description. One of the questions that I often get over on Instagram is whether or not it is worth it to do a PhD. And as I'm coming to the end of the fourth year of my PhD at MIT, two of which occurred during a global pandemic, I thought I would make a video on the pros and cons based on my experiences of doing a PhD in STEM. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan and I'm a PhD student who makes videos about AI, machine learning, emerging tech, and grad life. If you are curious about my PhD journey and how I got here, I have a whole playlist of videos about that. So I will leave a card up here and a link down in the description. And if you have any questions about my pros and cons, definitely leave a comment down below. Also, if you are a Nebula subscriber, I have an extended version of this video that covers four additional pros and cons that I won't talk about here. So if you're already subscribed, head over there to watch that. And if you're not, consider signing up for less than $15 a year at curiositystream.com short. So let's start with pros. The first pro that comes to mind for me is definitely schedule flexibility, especially as someone who makes content for the internet on the side. I have a lot of control over my schedule as long as I'm able to get my work done, get my experiments done, show up to the meetings that I have to show up to, but otherwise I can work from home, I can go into the lab. I'm, I'm really able to curate my schedule around what else I want to do in my life. And if something comes up, whether it be a doctor's appointment or a family event, it's usually not that hard for me to rearrange my schedule in order to accommodate those things. Now, I will note that I'm someone who came into my PhD actually doing half animal work, half computational work, and recently pivoted to just doing computational work. So I also just have a lot of flexibility in terms of where I can work physically and not everyone might have that. But I definitely enjoy the fact that I'm able to essentially work from anywhere, meet from anywhere. The pandemic has also really facilitated that because for a lot of my work, most meetings default to being virtual on Zoom. And so I can take a Zoom call wherever I have internet. Of course, the foil to this and my first con is the work-life balance or often lack thereof. So because my schedule is flexible, because there aren't necessarily clear boundaries between your work and your life unless you really intentionally set them, it's not unusual for people, including me, to start working weird hours, to start working too much, and to end up burning themselves out. And there isn't necessarily an expectation that you won't to that in grad school because at least within my program and often if I'm looking at what my friends do in my program it's not unusual for people to work 12 hour days seven days a week or something like that and for some people that's how they enjoy working but for other people it is the fact that they have these experiments that either take a lot of time or they have just a lot on their plate at the same time and need to pull these hours that don't really allow for any work-life balance. Or they have an advisor who frankly has unreasonable work-life balance expectations, which also is not necessarily unusual in academia. So my next pro and one of the main reasons why I decided to go to grad school, honestly, is the research flexibility and the fact that it really allows, in my opinion, for creativity. So. I feel like creativity is something that we don't necessarily talk about in the context of scientific research a lot or engineering, and I see especially research as kind of an inherently creative pursuit because it allows me to come up with all of these interesting and off-the-cuff ideas that you then have to figure out how to put together in real life, and I just think that that's a lot of fun, and that's also why I do things like make these videos. And so I think that when I was interning in industry, one of the things that I didn't necessarily love about working in industry was the fact that you couldn't necessarily have that kind of creativity in like an entry level internship style situation, because that's just not often how companies work, because that's honestly not necessarily great for their bottom line. So I love the fact that I can be super creative. I think that a lot of how creative you can be and how flexible your research is comes down to the people you work with and I happen to have mentors who are very cool with that. Some people also just prefer to have a project that's kind of outlined step by step for them and if that's what you prefer then more power to you. But for me one of the big pros of grad school was definitely the fact that I can be really creative and come up with 
unusual and interesting ideas as to how to do the work that interests me and how to solve scientific problems. Our next con is something that I talked about in my video on things I wish I knew before starting my PhD, and uh, that's money. You don't get paid a lot to go to grad school. <laughs> um, I'm lucky in that I have other forms of support, including this channel, and so that's not something that I worry about a ton on a day-to-day -day basis, but especially if you're friends with people who are not in academia, who are working kind of a standard nine to five job, they will often be making a lot more money than you, they're able to save for retirement, and so it definitely puts, I think, a financial hold or strain on anyone going through the process. There was actually a really interesting Twitter thread that I'll put up up here looking at essentially how PhD stipends at schools like MIT have increased or not increased compared to the cost of living in that area over the last couple of years. And in a lot of cases, your stipend is going to be below the cost of living in that area. So that could definitely be a big con of grad school. I will note that I think especially on academic Twitter, there's often some pushback to that in that for some people, depending on your background, you know, you may not have ever made as much money as you do on a PhD stipend, and that's great if you're making more money and able to support yourself more, but it's definitely not what I would consider a strong wage compared to other jobs that you could have outside of academia, in my experience, especially if you are in STEM. Our next pro ties a little bit into the research flexibility and creativity side of things, and that is intellectual ownership over your project. That was another one of the things that I think really drove me to academia to do a PhD over going straight into industry or startup life because when I was doing research as an undergrad, one of the things that I really loved about doing research was getting to own my entire project, getting to learn new skills, getting to research things that would normally be outside of my wheelhouse because it was my project and I got to collaborate with other people and learn a bunch of new things from other people but ultimately oversee kind of the direction of the project and do what needed to be done on a day-to-day -day basis in order to get it there. And so that's just something that I've always loved. I love seeing kind of the evolution of projects and going from starting when you just have a hypothesis to all of these results that turn into a paper or whatever. I've, I've always loved seeing that process. I always love seeing the evolution of answering questions that fascinate me. And so whether that be making videos for this channel or working on my thesis, that's just something that I really enjoy. And it was something that I really didn't find in entry-level internships when I was in college. Now, the con that goes with that is that it's f***ing hard. <laughs> Doing a PhD is hard. Like, I don't think that there's a way to get around that. I always reference, there's a comic that I never remember uh, who to credit to, but I'll put it up here. Uh, and essentially, it's describing what a PhD is from the perspective of all of the existing scientific knowledge in the world and it ends up being, you know, this little dent in a circle that's already really big, but making that dent is hard. You know, you're, you're discovering things that we didn't know before, and that's just inherently a difficult pursuit a lot of the time, and I think that, you know, if you enjoy being challenged, it can be good, but it's definitely not always fun, and one of the reasons why when I talk about mentors, one of the big things that I highlight when it comes to choosing a lab is that, in my opinion, I would rather pick mentors that I can work with throughout my PhD than a project that interests me, because the project isn't going to be fun every day. The project's going to the project's going to be hard. The project's going to suck sometimes, and if my support system can't help me through that, then at least for me, it's not really worth going through. That might be different for other people, as I always say whatever works for you, great for you. But for me personally, I definitely would not want to be on a project that is hard, and all projects are hard, but they're hard in different ways, but also not have that support system around me to help me get through the hard parts. So I'll leave it at that, but I did include four additional pros and cons in the Nebula Plus version of this video. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming service built by me and some of my friends, including people like Simon Clark, 12 Tone, and Medlife Crisis. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, extended versions of our videos, and bonus content that we can post without worrying about how well it will perform on YouTube. 
You'd also get access to our Nebula Originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including Tom Scott's game show Money or a very good trivia show where I won $500 for drawing a very nice circle. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction videos. In fact, if you're interested in behind-the-scenes content from one of my other YouTube friends, you should check out their documentary Behind the Spotlight, which tells the story of how Mr. Beast became, well, Mr. Beast. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code JORDAN, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. That's less than $15 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and getting to find out what those additional four pros and cons are. So sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at CuriosityStream.com slash JORDAN or using the promo code JORDAN. If you want to hear more about grad life, I will leave a playlist linked up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here if you want to see what my day-to-day -day life is like, and otherwise I will see you on the next one. Bye!